Hey everybody, welcome to mini lecture number two on hallucinogens. Today we're talking about hallucinogenic drugs pharmacology part one. So the potency of uh, given drugs vary. Uh, so not all hallucinogens are of the same strength. LSD is the most potent that we're talking about, whereas mescaline is the weakest. Uh, the onset, the duration to onset, and the duration of the trip itself varies based on drug. Uh, so for example, with LSD, onset typically happens between 30 and 90 minutes after uh, taking the drug, with the trip lasting 6 to 12 hours. Uh, whereas with salvia, um, the effect is almost immediate, within a few seconds, and uh, the, the trip lasts uh, well under an hour. Typically, there are four phases of the experience. Beginning with onset as the effects start to kick in, plateau as things sort of even out after the onset, peak when the uh, psychological effects uh, hit their strongest point, and then they come down as uh, the effects gradually taper off. Uh, users typically experience vivid hallucinations, slowing of the subjective sense of time, uh, feelings of depersonalization, so like an out-of-body experience, uh, strong, sort of profound emotional reactions, and uh, sometimes a disruption of logical thought. So here's a table from your text summarizing um, some different routes of administration and potency. As you can see, it takes the smallest amount of LSD of all the drugs that we're talking about to achieve an effect. You also see that uh, most of the popular forms of hallucinogenic drugs uh, cannot be eaten. They have to be administered in a way that bypasses first-pass metabolism. So um, what happens over the course of an acute administration of a, of a hallucinogenic drug? So during the peak, so when the, uh, the psychoactive effects of the drug are at their height, People typically report experiencing suspended time, so a feeling of vastly dilated uh, passage of time. Um, continuous stream of bizarre distorted images, so hallucinations, right, which is what you would expect. Um, this can go one of two ways. This can be a, a really uplifting sort of beautiful experience, or it can be menacing and uh, anxiety provoking. Uh, this depends on a number of factors, including the uh, mental and emotional state of the person taking the drug, as well as the context in which they're experiencing it. Uh, people can also experience synesthesia, or the crossing over of sensations. So something like hearing colors or feeling sounds, sort of crosstalk between different sensory areas in the brain, giving rise to a, a strange uh, synesthetic experience. So uh, this can be mystical and spiritually enlightening, hence the role in so many um, religious ceremonies throughout history, or it can be frightening and disturbing. This depends on a number of factors, such as dose, um, how much of this are you taking, the setting, are you in a calm, relaxed setting with friends, or did you accidentally take this in public, and individual factors, do you have a calm temperament, are you prone to bouts of anxiety, are you at risk for um, having a psychotic episode, uh, these sorts of things. It can be difficult to predict the outcome of something like an LSD trip, but these factors seem to be good predictors of what will happen. So how do people assess um, the psychological quality of taking hallucinogens? Um, there is the altered states of consciousness scale, which your, your book discusses, that rates has people rate sort of subjective dimensions, five subjective dimensions that can be further subdivided into more specific questions. Uh, they are oceanic boundlessness, this sort of feeling of large largeness and a sense of being one with uh, the larger world or universe. Um, ego disintegration anxiety, which is sort of that um, feeling of a loss of self, which is generally uh, anxiety provoking and unpleasant. Um, visionary restructuralization, this just refers to altered perceptions and changed meaning of, of percepts. Uh, reduced vigilance is what it sounds like. People are just less vigilant. And auditory alterations, so like auditory uh, hallucinations or changes in the way that uh, sounds are experienced. Here you, we have a um, graphed a number of these different uh, components of the altered states of consciousness scale. Uh, graphed is a function of the theoretical scale maximum. And we have plotted in red a placebo, which of course people are experiencing pretty minimal effects on all these things, placebo. And uh, blue, we have psilocybin. Uh, and you can see that things like experience of unity and uh, spiritual experience, which would fit under the oceanic boundlessness category, are, are heightened, as are a number of different uh, dimensions, complex imagery, um, a blissful state, 
uh, and we see a relatively low increase in impaired cognition, so people are not experiencing delirium or anxiety, they're not having a, a bad trip. Or at least this particular sample is not. So what are some physiological effects that are produced? Uh, well, we focus primarily on the uh, psychological quality of these drugs. Physiological effects also take place. Um, LSD can activate the sympathetic nervous system, which will produce pupil dilation, uh, an increase in body rate, or sorry, body temperature, heart rate, and blood pressure, as well as uh, dizziness, nausea, and vomiting. But that's uh, not a very common side effect, and they're more likely after consumption of things like peyote or mushrooms. Okay, that is it for our part one of uh, pharmacology of hallucinogenic drugs. I'll see you next time.